This is one of the coolest and weirdest LEGO Star Wars sets of all time, and the 8002 Destroyer Droid from the Technic subline of LEGO Star Wars sets, it released back in the year 2000 with 553 pieces, and it only cost $50 when it was released, but adjusted for inflation, you're looking at $90 in 2024 money, the year of the recording of this video, and more importantly, on sites like eBay, it'll cost you about $300 sealed in box. Looking at more of the box will show us more of what we can expect out of this set, including the ability to roll up into a ball and pop out into attack position. That is one of the best play features of all time in a LEGO Star Wars set that we're going to get to experience today. And this might have one of the best alternate builds ever from a LEGO Star Wars set, as this can be turned into what looks like a pretty good looking AAT, and you bet I'm going to build it. There's also some cool movie shots from the Phantom Menace on the back of the box. And overall, I think it does a decent enough job trying to tell you what this set does without explicitly writing it out. When I cut into this box, I did not know what I was getting into in more ways than one. Now, I knew that they had some really cool bags in these old LEGO Star Wars Technic sets, but to finally experience it for myself firsthand was something else. Wow, that is cool. Especially with the destroyer droid here, you can see the bags are numbered like normal Lego bags would be, but these ones actually have pictures of the set on there, and it specifically highlights the section of the build that you're building with that particular bag. There's also this other bag with a few other parts, and then there were two bags of rubber bands, which is good because this set has a lot of rubber bands and I was worried about them snapping, but having all the extras kind of put that fear at ease. Another thing I didn't expect here was this amendment sheet. It's a singular sheet of paper with a couple of different changes to the destroyer droid build, and it should should hopefully make the set better than it would have been otherwise. And the other other thing I didn't expect were the complete instructions to the alternate AAT build. Usually you see alternate builds on the back of LEGO Star Wars boxes, but rarely do you actually get the instructions for them. So as I was building the Destroyer Droid, being a Technic set with so many functions that need to work properly, I wanted to make sure I was doing it right, so I did some research online, and in that research, I came across a second version of the set, a completely different amendment sheet than the small sheet that I had in my box. I already wanted to buy a second one so that I could build the AAT alternate build, and so that made the decision a no-brainer. I bought a second destroyer droid sealed in box to hopefully get the second amendment sheet. Fortunately for me, my leap of faith worked out, and not only did I get to build the AAT alternate build, but I did actually receive the second amendment sheet inside of my box. This thing's got so many amendments, we may as well just call it the Constitution. Also, the main instruction manual does reflect the previous amendment sheets amendments. So those are actually built into a different version of the full instruction manual. What's important to know is you technically don't need any more parts to complete the fully amended version of the Droidica. The only difference in the second amendment version of the Droidica is that it has a couple of different red rubber bands instead of the black rubber bands. So I think they were specifically only included in the second version, but you can still use the original black rubber bands. I just assume the function works worse or wears more poorly over time with the black rubber bands versus the red rubber bands. But most of the amendments tend to be just simple design changes and in some cases completely remove parts from the build. So you actually end up with more extra parts in the second version of the build than you would have on the first version of the build. And so I built the second version of the build. I didn't build the first one. I built the best version of it for this review. First though, I want to discuss and review the AAT alternate build and for what it is, an alternate build made of parts that were originally intended for the destroyer droid, it's incredible. Obviously by any reasonable Lego standards, this isn't really a great looking or particularly good model of an AAT. For comparison's sake, this is the other AAT of the era. You can see these are on different levels. But even though it's an alternate build, they still built in functionality to it. So the cannon on top can rotate as well as move up and down. Although when it's up, it doesn't stay there. It just always reverts back to being in the lower position. But this can actually spin quite nicely, although it does get stuck sometimes coming across. You can see it kind of catching there on the pieces below it. Somehow with the parts available, they were able to actually get the shape down really nice on the AAT here. And it actually has a play function. It incorporates some rubber bands there. And you can push this piece in the back here and the cannons on the side will move up and down. So that's pretty cool. Like, it's insane that they just did this for an alternate model. I really doubt many people would have built this back in the day. It just wouldn't have made sense as you ended up with so many extra pieces. It, you know, you'd feel like you spent all this money, but you're really only using 20% of the parts you spent your money on to build a model. I really don't know who would have done this, but it's really cool and just something I had to take a look at in this video. This Droidica build here is nothing but incredible. Given it came out all the way back in the year 2000, it's insane how 
how good it looks. It's almost got all the detail you could want, starting with the three sensors at the head of the Droidica. They look really good. They've even got the proper layout with the primary sensor antenna below the other two. Now, I did mention earlier they switched out black rubber bands for red rubber bands, which is a bit distracting on the design. It does make the function work better that we'll look at later, but it does not look as good on the top of the Droidica. Looking to the back shell plate on the Droidica, I think it generally looks pretty good, although maybe it's got some more gaps than you would want that could have been reasonably easily filled in, but it's still a very unique look, and it's got some very unique pieces to LEGO Star Wars on it. It has these extremely thin Technic flex cables that you have to run through these other parts, and the way they're actually held in place is kind of crazy, as this piece here kind of locks them in. You see that in there? Like it literally slides in there and then you lock this to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. It's absolutely insane. I've never seen anything like it on a Lego Star Wars set. And after looking it up, these flex cables have only ever been in a few other sets. Just inside the back shell, you have these red grill pieces. And I'm actually not entirely sure why they're red other than to maybe indicate that's where you should put your hand, but otherwise it's distractingly red. There's also a bit more red at the bottom that again, doesn't really need to be red other than to tell you that's where you're supposed to push. Anyway, looking at the arms and blasters on this guy. They're pretty good looking for the era and they can actually be pushed up and pushed back to simulate firing. However, that's also kind of a side effect of the main feature on this set being that it rolls up into a ball, which we're getting to. This also has some very nice tubing or wiring detail using these rubbery Lego pieces that look and work so great for what they're supposed to be here. I think they did a really good job with the angling and design of these deflector shield plates. They look really good to me. Looking to the feet on the Droidica, they look really good. It's just really made using a few different Technic pieces, but it ended up working really well and there's the back third leg there all in all it's a pretty sturdy setup but it does have some give to it for someone that's displaying it like me though it's not a problem at all and before i roll this thing up into a ball i want to show some of the rubber bands built into this set they are the reason it works so they are very important to the design some of them are constantly in a stretched out position so i do fear that over time they will wear down and the functionality won't work as good as it maybe did when i first got it but for something that's been in the box over 20 years it works pretty well so let me show you so honestly, even with the step-by-step -step instructions, it's not really a cakewalk because there's things like this. You have to hold the head down and if I let go of it, it pops back up. So it says I need to hold it down, but on this page here, it shows the head is down, but then you need to have hands underneath, which I can't physically do. I can't hold all three things at once. I only have two hands. So we're gonna hold this down and then push this up while holding this, I think, until it clicks. It's supposed to click, you're supposed to click. No, hold on. The next page has supposed to click. Okay, that one clicked. Okay, so that clicked into position, perfect. So after that, we need to fold the arms up. That's easy enough, maybe the easiest step of the whole thing. It actually took me a while to realize that the page is also asking you to push the arms into the body of the Droidica. That's not super apparent when just looking at it, but you do need to do it. Now that that's done, we need to push this red button down so that we can lift the legs into the body of the Droidica. And then when we release it, it's supposed to come back down, but it doesn't release, so I'll push this back down on my own and I think we are all set. I think I did all of the steps properly. We're good to go. Holy crap, it's ready. Look at this thing. Isn't that just so cool that something from the year 2000 can look so good for display, be so accurate, yet still have the perfect functionality that represents exactly what this thing does in the movie? That's just insane to me. So I love this thing for that, but let me show you the functionality of it and you're gonna love it even more. That there is what I am trying to accomplish. Maybe easier shown than done. So essentially I wanna roll this so it hits the big red button on top as it comes over and that will make the whole thing pop out. Oh shoot, oh no, no, no. I just disarmed it, I fixed it. Hopefully I don't mess it up again. Let's give it a good roll. Oh my goodness, look at how cool that is. <laughs> Maybe not like that. Isn't that just awesome? It's just awesome. So I don't think it's hyperbole to say that that is probably the single greatest play function ever on a Lego Star Wars set, and it will absolutely never be topped. Unless they make another Technic Droidica that does the same thing, but better, there's no way anything cooler than this is gonna come along. I know this set's over 20 years old, but if you ever have the opportunity to buy the 2000 Destroyer Droid, definitely take it. This is an amazing set that is just kind of a gem that was hidden in plain sight to me. I always knew this set existed and that it was cool and that it had the function that it had, but to actually own it, to have built the alternate model, and have actually learned about some of its history and the amendments behind it and what made it as good as it is now is really cool. And I'm actually kind of curious how much worse it was before the amendments. I guess I may never know, but changing out some of the rubber bands 
bands to a different, slightly different rubbery material probably made it a little bit better. I'm curious, you know, what it would have been as the original model if I had built it like that, but I'm glad I went with the better, best version of it that existed. So let me know if you guys plan on picking this set up in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this review, hit the like button and you can check out more LEGO Star Wars set reviews on the end screen now.